place. And he uses Iconium for a second example. In Iconium chapter, and, 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 talking about Iconium chapter number 14, verse number 1. And it came to pass in Iconium that they went, that they went both together into the synagogue of the Jews. There they go again. <laughs> right into the synagogue of the Jews. And so spake. Amen. There it is again. Yes, that the great multitude, both of the Jews and, of, and also the Greeks, believed. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Long time, therefore, abode they speaking loudly, speaking boldly in the Lord, of which gave testimony unto the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hand. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the, Gent with the apostles. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also the Jews with their rulers, they uh, to use them despitefully and to stone them. I tell you, beloved, the first time they simply cast them out of the city, but this time they threatened to cast stones at them. Yeah. It's gotten a little bit worse. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Paul is addressing Timothy. Don't forget our text. Paul is addressing Timothy and admonishing him that if you live for God, you might as well expect persecution. And I tell you, Paul gave these examples, and you look back at them, and it says that Timothy fully knew what had happened. Sure. No doubt Paul had rehearsed those things and told him and testified to him what God had done and what had happened in those places. But he said, now, Timothy, when you go to those places, and when you get in situations, and you speak for the Lord, Time that you proclaim truth it, it is in opposition to untruth. Amen. Anytime you proclaim uh, the doctrines of the Bible, it is against false doctrine. Right. And in this passage of Scripture, Paul here is instructing Timothy that, son, I'm going to tell you something. Listen to me, please. That you're going to have to stand. And he goes on down to there and instructs him and teaches him and tells him that the word of God uh, is of God. He said, don't worry about it. But what you got to say is not your own word, but it's the word of the very living God. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't be afraid. And don't be silent about it. Tell it, proclaim it. Because God has told you to give it to you. In Iconium, they suffered persecution and affliction. I'm telling you, these men meant business, brother. They were seeking to hurt them. Paul, no doubt, his mind went back when he first got saved. I and mean, I remember people like that. All I'm trying to do is live for God and serve God. All I'm trying to do is present the truth to them. It's something that will help them. It's not to hurt them. It's going to help them if they'll take heed to it. But now they're, they're seeking to his life. They're trying to persecute him and stone him. They've already cast him out of the city. And now they're picking up stones to cast out in prayer. How can he say, preacher, I don't Said it is called blood, but I, I believe it's very serious. There is enough, there is enough minds in the Christian church. Amen. Well, they act out all the things, but they don't say nothing. Yeah. That's it. That's what we're talking about. When that person at work says, Well, you know, there's all kinds of ways to get to heaven. That's when you go. Oh. When they say, when they say things that oppose the truth, that just flung the door open. Yes, For you to say something, so I preach, I shouldn't say nothing. They said something. Why right. right. did you say something? Right. I tell you, Paul here, I tell you, he took, uh, he took uh, uh, the opposition uh, face on. I mean, when he had an opportunity, he took advantage of it. And he said,
when people they can say anything they want to contrary to scripture. No, and nobody. No, right. Nobody right. will take right. the opportunity that God has given them. Say, preacher, I don't know much. You know more than they know about the truth. That's right. I don't care if you know very much at all. You know more than they know. You know more than they know. And sometimes we have dealt with people on the street. And I tell you, I know my college kid, like my mom said. I know my high school kid that were brilliant. Right. And they could get off on some other subject. I had nothing about it. Well, that's way above me. And I had to come back to what I knew. Right. Come on back to the scriptures. Come on back to what I was, yeah. what I was there for. Now, I tell you, but they may be the most intellectual person on earth, but they know zero about the word of God. Right. Zero about the truth. The natural man does not understand those things. And here Paul is te teaching Timothy, I'm going to tell you, son, it's wonderful, for living, it's wonderful to live for God. That's the only life worth living. That'd be your best. But beware that there'll come persecution in your life when you live godly in Christ. Amen. So therefore, I I'm taking it that Paul gives the examples and he makes that statement. So he's showing by the example that there's more to living godly in Christ Jesus than just simply getting up every morning, putting your clothes off, going through life, not cussing anybody out, and not robbing a bank or anything like that. But there's more to it. Amen. The third, the third example he gave was Lystra. Look here, if you will, please, in the same chapter, Acts chapter number 14, and verse number 19. After, after what happened to Iconium, they fled for their life and went down to Lystra, and there was a man healed there. Well, look up, look up, if you will, please, verse number 9. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had been faith, that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, there he is talking again. Said with a loud voice, stand up upon thy feet, and he leaped and walked. There he could have passed by that man, but he said something. Through the power of God, not the power of Paul, but that man was healed, he got up because he spoke to him. Because he told him uh, to get up from there. And Paul did not do it in his own flesh. Uh, they came and tried to worship him. He said, hey, wait a minute, he wasn't us. Amen. He's God Almighty. Amen. And healed that man. Brought those things to pass. And then in verse number 19, those uh, that had been uh, over at Antioch and Iconium that still hated their guts. Came over there, look at what it says in verse number 19. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch 